Dan Carter, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to be speaking uh, in this debate today. I think if we needed further proof that this government was out of ideas and out of time, I wasn't going to mention the Honourable Gentleman's speech. I was going to say that the King's speech uh, is the evidence of that, because it takes no action on the issues that my constituents face on a daily basis. Exactly. It doesn't even come close. It's, it does nothing to deal with the cost of living crisis, mm -hmm. with the housing crisis, or with the climate crisis. And yeah. let me start with the cost of living crisis. If only to remind those on the government bench who seem to have forgotten the impact that it's having <coughs> on millions across the country. The cost of a loaf of bread is 20% higher than it was just this time last year. Mm -hmm. How are families able to purchase basic essentials at a time of rising prices. Yeah. Inflation may be falling, but this doesn't mean that prices are falling. Exactly. How are families to afford housing when there is a chasm between housing allowance and the lowest rents, yeah. or when mortgage rates are soaring? How are families meant to save for the future amidst the longest squeeze on wages for generations? Real average weekly earnings have increased by five pounds since 2010, in stark contrast to the 14% increase experienced between 2000 and 2010 under a Labour government. And on the housing crisis, the, go the government simply do not see it as a priority. We are now on our 16th housing minister in 13 years, and promised in 2019 the Renters' Reform Bill is subject again to indefinite delay because of the need for legal reforms. Mm -hmm. But every week I receive emails from constituents who have been given a Section 21 notice, and they tell me the exhausting experience of being evicted from the place that they call home, having to live in a state of limbo, having to pack up belongings, leave support networks and employment at immense personal, mental and financial cost. There is nothing in the King's speech to protect renters, mm. just further delay and inaction. Exactly. This government promised to end rough sleeping by 2024. And again, it's look bad. at its record. It's risen by 74% since 2010. Shocking. And on the climate crisis, the government has taken this opportunity to legislate for annual oil and gas licensing rounds, deepening our dependence on dirty, expensive, volatile fossil fuels that will not only torch the climate commitments it's made, but will undermine energy security. Yeah, yeah. It won't bring down energy bills at home, not my words, but the words of the current energy secretary. Exactly. And energy bills are double what they were two years ago. In comparison, Labour would make the UK a clean energy superpower, yeah, yeah, yeah. go much faster on renewables and cut bills for struggling families. Exactly. Mr. M Madam Deputy Speaker, the Prime Minister in his conference speech promised change. He did so because everywhere he looked there was a record of failure. Exactly. The country knows that it's not the party opposite that will deliver change and it's only a Labour government that can lead us on an era of national renewal. And I want to use the final minute that I have to express my disappointment that my own Care Supporters Bill mm. uh, that I was putting through Parliament was ignored during the, King, the, the King's speech. It, it had the important principle that the care of a loved one is not an optional extra when you're in a hospital or a care home. And I would mm. ask ministers once again to consider uh, making this legislation in the little time that they have left. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.